Okay, so now let's fast forward to this season. Gordon is gone. Today's game, Bulls were up 86-83. to Okay, so you've got Calderon coverage on Heinrich. Okay, and Rose has the ball in the upper left of your screen there. Or upper left of the court. Upper left of the hoop, and 7.38 left in the fourth. This was it was pretty tight, but the Bulls seem to still have a little bit of an advantage here. Okay, now look how much distance Heinrich's defender is giving him at the three-point arc. Compare that to what you saw from the previous year's video with Gordon. Okay, and Rose has the ball. Look at the paint. Completely stacked. Completely, totally stacked. Okay, and Jarrett Jack is totally sagging off Kirk. I mean, he's he's in the paint practically. Heinrich is wide open at three, and Deng is, look at his defender, totally sagging off him. You know, he's a good shooter, but he's not a three-point shooter. So Rose can't penetrate, but Heinrich's wide open. Okay, Jack is giving him so much distance. So, well, of course, what is Rose going to do? What any smart point guard would do, pass it to the guy that's wide open, right? Well, you know, and Deng's wide open as well. Okay. Now... You know, Kirk is also not the quick release that Gordon is. You know, because by the time Rose gets Kirk the ball, look, Jack is already there, and then Kirk has to drive, and we throw up a shot and clank. And, okay, Gibson gets the rebound, but, you know, they didn't score on that play. So, you know, no double team, no openings for anybody because none of our shooters get any respect because they can't shoot. Okay, now this... This one is just really depressing. Um, okay, so the Bulls just scored on by Toronto. I believe Bosch had a couple of free throws. So, you know, Rose bring the ball up. Noah's trailing. Okay, so Rose has the ball. You know, he sees a little bit of an opening. If you look behind bars, you see a bit of place where Rose penetrate. And he stops. Now, why did he stop? Okay, so you've got Calderon on Rose. You have Bards who was getting ready. You have Bosch right planted firmly in the middle. And you have Turk who's totally sagging off Dang. There was no way that Rose could penetrate without any of those other three guys beyond his defender stopping him. Just an iron brick wall. Again, 86-85. Okay, so he passes it off to Gibson. Gibson passes it to Heinrich. Okay. Heinrich is not a penetrator, but again, now he's going to run the same brick wall. So again, what, what, is, what is he supposed to do? Well, he's going to pass it off to Rose again. Okay, now notice Bosch and Turk did not move. Okay, Rose gets the ball back. Called Rose. Look at look at Bargs. Is that Bar? No, I believe that's DeRozan. And Jack is not is kind of touching Heinrich, but it doesn't look like he's gonna go back. Okay, look at Turk. There's Bosch. They have not moved since before. And Dank. Look how far off Turk is sagging off Dank. Unbelievable. I mean, the the total lack of respect the defense shows our perimeter shooters should give you a clue about where their main focus is. 100% on Derrick Rose. This is literally four guys where their heads turn to Derrick Rose. Somebody was saying in the post-game thread, not a single person on the defense is focused on any of the guys on the perimeter. Look at Heinrich, wide open. Come, look, at, look how far Jack has sagged off Heinrich. And I've already shown you how far he's sagging off Dang. Okay, now Rose is like, okay, well, maybe I'm going to penetrate. Bosch is there. And I believe that's DeRozan. And so he's going to try. He's going to try. You see that opening. This is almost exactly like how he penetrated in the Pistons game. But this time, the defense is there. You got Barbs and you got Bosch right there. Already there before him. Okay. Now... Deng has gotten over to the other side, you know, and but his defender is already there too. So now remember, Kirk was wide open, right? Yep, still wide open. Now you know, look look at Jack. He is so far off. It's pathetic. Like, you know, you think I mean, just give the guy a little bit of respect, right? Well, in this case, you'll see Toronto knew exactly what they were doing. Again, you got Deng in the corner, or Deng on the side, and Heinrich totally sagged off by Jack. And Rose, Bosch and Barks up in his grill. 
Okay. And he gets it to Heinrich. Okay. And Heinrich has a pretty good shot. You know, Jack is gonna try to defend it, but he's he's already too far off. So Heinrich takes it, clank, and Toronto ball. Again. No perimeter offense, no double teams. Four guys at Derek Gross. Four guys at Derek Gross. That's unbelievable. Okay, now this one is dedicated to everybody who says that Rose isn't aggressive. Rose doesn't try to take over. Now, you've seen clearly that whenever he tries to penetrate, four guys come in the lane and clog it up. Now, at this point, Toronto's up by five. Okay, Rose has to take over now. No choice. You know, he's sick and tired of passing it to Heinrich, seeing him shoot up bricks. He can't penetrate. So, okay, he's got the ball. Now, look, Miller's with Noah. Okay. Or Miller's with Bosch. Okay, Gibson is down there in the paint. Rose has the ball. He's got to make a decision. Look at Heinrich is getting sagged off again by Calderon, wide open. But this time, Rose is just like, you know what, screw this. Somebody has to take over this game. You know, I can't penetrate because look who's in the paint. I think that's Turk. Or, no, that's sorry, that's Barks. Yeah, Barks is in the paint. Being guarded by Gibson. Okay. And Rosa says, you know what, screw this. I'm putting it up. And of course he misses. You know, because he's got two guys, Bosch and Wright, up in his face. And at that point, that was pretty much the game right there. So, there you go, Bulls fans and general NBA fans. A uh, little bit of uh, expose on the Bulls offense then and the Bulls offense now. And why, uh, despite the objections of many... It's almost vitally important to have a decent perimeter threat. Some cases, the perimeter threat is so important that the defense, no matter what kind of penetration there is, they will stay on until the ball goes through the hoop, as you saw in the one clip from that Pistons game where Aaron Aflalo just literally stayed on Ben Gordon until the ball went through the hoop, Derrick Rose scored. So you can see the contrast this year. Defenders are totally sagging off. Our perimeter guys like Heinrich and, uh, in this case, Denk, who's not even a three-point shooter. So I'm not sure what the point is in the offense for him to be sitting at the three-point line in the corner when he, you know, yeah, he made a few threes here and there during the season, but he's by no means a good three-point shooter. So, again, uh, you know, the moral of the story is it, it's having an impact, as you can see on uh, our interior game, you know, because big guys are able to clog the lane. And then, you know, when we take shots, they're there to get the rebound. Um, you know, it affects our ability on the offensive boards, even though we're doing really well. And I give a lot of credit to Joe Noah for that. Um, you know, it's just, it's completely impossible for Derek Rose to penetrate because, I mean, for all the criticism that's going on, if you have four guys in the lane and two of them are sagging off from perimeter, to perimeter shooters, in this case, it was Dang and Heinrich. Normally, it's Heinrich and Salmons if we put both of them out there at once and we have Rose on the court at the same time. And the way they've been shooting, you can totally see why they'd be sagging out. So, moral of the story is we need a perimeter shooter. We need it quick. Otherwise, um, you know, that's probably the best you're going to see from Derek Rose all year long. And, you know, I, I agree. I don't think it's the ankle anymore, but, you know, you tell me if he can get past four defenders and, uh, you know, I as much as everybody say, oh, well, try to draw a foul. I don't think they're going to call a foul when he runs into four guys. And, you know, it's just going to be another turnover. So, again, uh, SOS, we need a perimeter guy ASAP. End of story, end of podcast. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And uh, hopefully the Bulls uh, can pull out a victory in the next game. So, uh, until then. Uh, this has been uh, the first inaugural edition of the uh, Illegal Offense podcast. Thank you.